Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, Sharia here. I'm excited to share with you this morning. It's May 7th, and um, I don't know if you guys got to listen to the one-year reading last week that I did, but um, it was in Judges 111. And I just think it's pretty sweet of the Lord because today we are reading in 1 Samuel 1 1. So 1 1 1. And you know, last week I shared that that is my love sign from the Lord. And I just kind of shared a testimony of what the Lord walked me through with that. So I thought that was pretty sweet this morning to wake up and it be 1 1 1 again. But this morning, I want to share with you out of the portion of scripture in 1 Samuel. And um, I love this. It was a, actually this morning in my quiet time. You know, I can't do anything except come and be really real and vulnerable and just share what the Lord's sharing with me. And um, this morning, I, I honestly, I, I, as soon as I opened it up and I saw 1 Samuel 1, uh, 1 I knew that I was going to share on this scripture and I was reading through and asking the Lord what he wanted to speak. He really was just speaking to me in regards to my own circumstances and things in my life. And um, so this morning I actually want to share on the story of Hannah and Penina and I want to talk about pain. This is a, a little bit of a hard one for me because I never feel like there's not enough time to go in depth as much as you could go in depth and answer all the questions that everybody could have in regards to pain and why things happen to us. Um, but I do feel like this morning the Lord spoke to me and I just want to share what he was speaking to me. Um, so I'm going to read the, the verse to you guys and then I'll just kind of talk to you about what the Lord was speaking to my heart this morning. So it says, there was a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramah in the region of Zuth. I'm going to skip all the rest of the names in the towns. He had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah did not. Each year, Elkanah would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of Heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. Now, this is important that the Lord that the Lord mentions this in this portion of Scripture. Um, on the days Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Penina and each of her children. And though he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. And that actually is, a, he would give her a double portion. Um so Penina would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah be, would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than ten sons? Once, after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying, Eli watched her. He went on to say, are you drunk? Um, and she was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm, I am full of sorrow. I'm praying out of anguish and sorrow. And in, in that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the Lord grant your request. And it goes on and, and she actually has a child and she does bring him back to the temple and um, dedicates him to the Lord. And you know that Samuel goes on to live in the temple and um, to become the next judge, um, actually the last judge of Israel before they move into the kings. Um, and so as I was reading this, I was struck by the two women in this verse, Penina and Hannah. And the thing that 
I was struck with because if I'm being vulnerable, I've walked through some different pain and different things in my life. Um, and I, I think it was last week, maybe two weeks ago, I was praying through some of that one day as I'm just washing dishes and talking to the Lord. And I felt the Lord give me permission to feel the pain, to feel the sadness. But then I also felt him warn me to not give it a voice in my life. And by give it a voice, I don't mean that I don't talk about the pain. I mean, I don't allow the pain to dictate the way that I respond or react um, to the person who caused the pain, to um, the, the way that I believe about myself and things like that. Um, and so I guess one of the ways that I can describe that is when the pain happened, I can allow it to say, ah, oh, see, it happened because you weren't good enough or it happened because you weren't the first choice. Um, and I can allow that pain to begin to have a voice and to speak, or I can allow um, love and I can allow the truth of God to speak. And so I knew that the Lord was telling me that that I needed to, whose voice am I listening to? I needed to listen to the voice of the Lord and that that pain could come in and I could allow it to, to destroy me or I could allow, I could surrender it and allow the Lord to heal it and actually um, use it for good. So that was a couple of weeks ago. And then today, as I'm reading the scriptures about Panina and Hannah, I was struck by the way that they both had pain in their life. So Panina had pain because Panina was not her husband's first choice. She, um, he loved Hannah more than he loved Panina. And Hannah had pain because she wanted a child and she was barren. And neither one of these women had control over the pain in their life. Okay, Panina couldn't make her husband love her more. And Hannah could not make herself bear children. So neither one of them could change the situation that happened to them. The situations were out of their control, but they both had pain. They both encountered these scenarios and these situations in their life that have caused pain, not because of their own doing. Um, and I, if you're like me, I've had pain in my life. Um, one of the scenarios is when I was seven years old, my, my mom and my dad divorced when I was around five or six. When I was seven years old, my dad um, came to the house that we were at and told us that he was moving out of the state and that he was gonna go and move back with um, a, a wife that he had had before my mother and with a daughter that he had that I didn't know anything about until this day. And in my mind, as a young girl, when he said that he was going to go live with her, his daughter, his other daughter, in my mind, it felt like he chose her over me. And in much the way that Panina felt like um, she wasn't the first love, she wasn't the first choice, that is how I felt. And that pain and that um, feeling of not being chosen or not good enough rolled over into a lot of areas into my life. And then one day, um, through prayer and a time of prayer with the Lord, the Lord began to show me the truth of that situation and, and to begin to set me free from that situation. But even, re even more recently, pain of feeling like um, I wasn't good enough. 
um, and, and how the enemy wants to taunt me with this pain. And, you know, in some of the, the versions of this scripture, it actually calls Penina Hannah's adversary. And the adversary would taunt with this, um, you know, what Hannah probably perceived as this inadequacy in her life. She couldn't bear children. Um, it was considered like a, a curse, like that she was an inadequate woman. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking at these two women and I look at Panina and Panina chose um, to use the pain in her life and become bitter. And so she became bitter and out of that bitterness, she would taunt Hannah and she would, she'd put her down for her weakness and for her inadequacy because she was bitter because her husband loved her Hannah more. And Hannah in her pain chose to run to the feet of God. And I realized in looking at these two women's lives that we all have pain that comes that we is that comes from life that we have no control over. And the only thing that we have control over is the way that we respond to it and the way that we allow ourselves to react to the pain in our lives. And do we, do we feel the pain and do we acknowledge this? That yes, like, um, man, I've spent many a times at the feet of Jesus crying out for help, giving him this pain, giving him this area that needs healed. And um, I was just reminded this morning that I have the opportunity to choose to give pain a voice to say, um, to become bitter and to begin to use it against people or to use it um, as an excuse to become angry and, or I can choose to be like Hannah and to throw myself at the feet of Jesus. And one of the things that's incredible about this story and, and one of the ways, you know, I don't have all the answers as to why we endure the pain and the things that, that we go through. But what I do know is, is in this story with Hannah and Panina is that um, when it talks about the priests that were, that were in charge at this time, y'all, they were evil. They were wicked. When you read the story, they were what they were doing things against the Lord. And Eli, the judge at that time, would not stop his sons from doing this. And the Lord was angry. And because of this, he had already began to put in place through Hannah a new one, a new um, judge that would come along, Samuel, who would serve the Lord and be faithful to the Lord. And so Hannah's pain that she surrendered to the Lord actually became a victory and freedom for the people of Israel, for the next generation to come. And so I know this, that we can allow our pain to steal and to rob from us, or we can allow our pain to become a testimony and to become freedom for the people who are coming after us and the people who are around us. And we can let it become a testimony of Jesus. And I know this, that in my life, the story of my insecurities that came from that scenario with my father uh, has taught me about the faithfulness of Jesus like nothing else ever could. Because I have ran to him and when, when my dad let me down and when my dad chose or felt like he chose someone else, I have seen the Lord choose me over and over and over and over. And I've seen the Lord come and speak to me in ways where he's shown me even through a vision of myself in the womb and how he showed me himself speaking to me and saying, oh, you have no idea the plans that I've prepared for you. And even from the womb, as he was knitting me together, as he was calling out my destiny, this is a God who knew me and chose me from the very beginning. 
And even though in the earthly things, my earthly father let me down and pain came and, and other people have let me down and caused pain, he has never failed me. And I've learned that he is faithful through the pain and through the things that I've walked through. And so, no, it's not easy. It's not easy to, to run to the feet of Jesus. And if I'm honest, I've avoided quiet times a lot of time because I've known that I'm going to have to run and it's going to be a sob fest of getting out this pain at the feet of Jesus. But every single time that I go and I surrender it, the Lord comes and he rushes in. And I um, have seen his faithfulness. Um, and here lately, the Lord has honestly been talking to me about the scripture in Luke and there's a lot of other places where it talks about this and it, it says, um, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And like the Lord's reminding me over and over again of my need for him, my need and my, my dependence upon him for everything, even in my, even in my sadness and in my sorrow, it says that Hannah was full of sorrow. She was a sorrowful woman. She was full of sadness and she, she did not let that sorrow bring her to a place of bitterness. She allowed that sorrow to draw her into the feet of Jesus. And in that place where we realize we need him, that's where the freedom comes. That's where the healing comes because we cannot do it on our own. We have got to run to the feet of Jesus. And it says that he is the healer. He is the comforter. He came for the sick. He came for the broken. He came for the lost. He came for the wounded. That's who he came for. And it's not until we realize that he's the answer and we've got to, we've got to run to him with our stuff, that he can heal it and he can begin to mend it. Um, and I love, I love that about Jesus. You know, her husband tried to console her. Her husband, Hannah's husband was like, am I not enough? Am I not better than 10 sons? And y'all, he wasn't, he wasn't enough. Jesus was the only one. God was the only answer to that scenario, to that situation. And when she ran to him, when she gave it to him, um, when she realized that she couldn't change her circumstance, only God could, that's when everything changed. So this morning, I want to encourage you to run to Jesus. If you have pain, if you have sorrow, if you have something in your life, um, don't get bitter like Panina. That was my prayer this morning. Man, Lord, I don't, I want to be like Hannah that runs to your feet with sadness, with sorrow, with pain. I don't want to be like Panina that becomes bitter and allows that bitterness to destroy and to bring death. Um, but I want to run to you and allow you to use it for your glory and for your good, to not allow this pain to feel like a waste, but to let it be a testimony and to bring breakthrough to others. So that was my prayer this morning. And I hope that if, if you, like me, have had pain in your life, I can't answer this morning why it happens the way it happens. I know that for me personally, I realize I'm not God. I'm not going to fully understand everything, but I know who my God is and I know that I can trust him and I know that he's good. And so I can run to him no matter where I find myself in any situation, in any season, I can run to him. I can give it to him and he will be faithful because that's who he is. So run to him this morning. I love you guys. Man, his word is so good. He's so good. Bless you.